Just doing a mic check. Want to make sure everybody can hear me. Uh, just go ahead and say yes or hello in the questions, please. Thank you. All right, I'm just going to give another minute or two. We have a couple last arrivals, and let's go ahead and get started here in a minute. Hello, my name is Christopher McCabe. I'm an applications engineer at Unitronics. This is UniCloud getting started with the basics of VisoLogic. VisoLogic. I invite anybody who has questions to place them in the question box, and I'll be happy to tend to them at the end of the presentation. UniCloud is the complete no-code 
IIoT cloud platform for OEMs and machine builders. UniCloud allows you to gather data and display in a format of your choosing, depending on the application at hand. To start, I would like to introduce some terminology that we will see throughout your UniCloud experience. An asset type is the application at hand. The asset type is going to hold the telemetry, which is being passed from the controller to the cloud interface. This data is then displayed in a format of your choice on defined user dashboards that allows navigation to different areas of the interface. An asset is the actual machine in the field that is running the asset type. In the case of the Jazz, Samba, and Vision controllers, the asset will consist of a PLC and a router, both of which have serial numbers that must be validated at the cloud level. Once connected through the router, you'll have remote access along with the ability to pass data. An organization is a company that has a cloud account that allows users to access specific portions of the cloud account. This will consist of the machine builder and any channels associated with the organization. They will then have the ability to add or subtract users and devices, allow in customers to be invited to view the data associated with the machines that are connected. For those who attended yesterday's session, the Unistream does not need a UCR router to be cloud capable so long as it has an internet connection. In the case of the Vision, Samba, and Jazz PLCs, a router is required because the router is what is passing the telemetry with MQTT protocol. The Vision, Samba, and Jazz controllers do not support MQTT protocol, and that is why we need a router to achieve this. The machine builder is going to log into the cloud account and will be able to design dashboards, adjust user settings, and monitor or manage the devices for performance, service, and maintenance needs based upon the metrics that are being collected by the cloud interface. User dashboards are going to hold the information necessary for that particular asset type. The dashboards incorporate navigation to get to and from certain areas of the cloud account. You can then use the dashboards to generate reports, set up predicted maintenance, and always know when a machine is in need of service. Some of UniCloud's main features include data presentation, and what I mean by data presentation is visualization and data analytics that provide a fully customizable user experience. The ability to configure your dashboards as desired using the available widgets is a very powerful feature for UniCloud. Asset management gives you the ability to add, subtract, and edit devices that are on or accessible to the cloud account. This includes location, subscription, and the ability to utilize your remote access options. Organization management allows a company to be fully structured to give access to different users to certain dashboards or devices with admin privileges, or it can allow limited access to these areas in the cloud account. These settings are fluid and can be adjusted as needed, depending on the company's needs. These are not set in stone. UniCloud also offers secure remote access. Web server and VNC are not supported by the Samba, Vision, or Jazz controllers. However, VPN allows the ability to connect through a secure tunnel into the controller from the cloud interface. If a project or firmware changes need to be made, you have the ability to use VPN to get a secure connection through your cloud account and to the controller, including seeing the controller in online mode. Dashboard building offers a fully customizable experience. Widgets are drag and drop with no additional code needed to set up the dashboard as desired. All of these parameters associated with each widget 
are drop-down selectable, making the configuration and implementation extremely easy to use to show the information as desired. Dashboards also support multi-languages. Any dashboard that is created in English can also be converted to Spanish, French, Italian, and so on, depending on what users might be interacting with the dashboards that are being accessible. Last but not least, but also most importantly, the interface is completely secure. You must have a valid username and password to even enter the UniCloud account in order for your assets to be added to the account and then be recognized by the dashboards. The communication is certificate base. As MQTT is a very secure protocol that is used to pass the telemetry to the dashboards from the router. UniCloud is meant to raise efficiency by boosting your bottom line using the built-in analyst tools. You have the ability to collect aggregated data for schedules, top performance finder, and other user-defined tools. Bash commissioning offers no code, and because the setup is so easy, you have the ability to add devices to your cloud account and access them immediately, which allows us to have a hassle-free setup. UniCloud gives you full control with remote access to your organizational structure. It allows you to go live in under 30 minutes. This means that you have a fully integrated IIoT solution that is immediately ready to tell you the status of machines and pass vital data to the dashboard. Configuring the asset, connecting the PLC, building the dashboards, and setting up accessibility for your users can be done in a matter of minutes, which I will highlight for you today. This allows a machine builder to analyze KPIs, improve performance, increase revenue, track maintenance, and at the end of the day, be as effective as possible. This is all done with no code and no previous cloud experience required. UniCloud truly does have it all, built-in cloud infrastructure, interfaces, and functionality that allow you to achieve maximum efficiency. I would now like to jump into VisiLogic to demonstrate how you will sync and upload assets from the PLC through the router to your UniCloud account using a Vision 570 controller. Because the router is mandatory in case where Vision, Samba, and Jazz controllers are being used, none of the actual setup is done in the software outside of creating the project that is going to be added as an asset type. This particular application that you see here is manipulating MI or memory integer zero labeled as the current value, which will be then able to reference at the cloud level. Like I mentioned before, this controller is a V570 and I am connected to a B5 at and router with an at and SIM card. One important aspect to the UCR router models is you must use the SIM card for the brand that you have purchased for the router if mobile is going to be your method of internet connectivity. For the sake of time, I have already downloaded this project to the controller. In order to gain cloud access, I must do all of my configuration in the router setup page shown here. To access this, you will enter in the URL the IP for the gateway on the UCR router that you have purchased. You will then be prompted with this web page that you see here. I will go ahead and log in with my credentials, and here you will see my UCR overview page. On the right hand side, you can find where my mobile data is displayed. You'll see under mobile the WAN settings. The wide area network address is giving the capability to connect via the internet. This is what is allowing the cloud account to ultimately see the controller that is connected to the router. In order to configure UniCloud, navigate to services and select UniCloud. 
If you have not already created an account, you can navigate to unitronics.io and once you have the credentials to sign in, you can use these to add a Vision, Samba, or Jazz controller through the router to your account. In the first tab, the UniCloud Configuration General Settings, I'm going to use these credentials to log in. I'll select Connect. And the message that gets returned is the organization's ID is successfully acquired. I have created this specifically for this demonstration called Unitronics. It is very important in between each of these steps to select the Save button so that the entire configuration is continuously applied throughout this process. You'll see in the top right hand corner that the profile is being updated and implemented. Now that I have saved, I am going to add my PLC by selecting the PLC tab here. First, I will name the PLC B570 Webinar and go ahead and select Add. Now, the serial number that will be validated at the cloud level must match what you are entering in the router setting. I'm going to enter the serial number from the sticker on my B570 here. I will then choose the PLC model, B570. Now the IP address that I've set for this panel is 192.168.1.50, or my LAN address for my router is 192.168.1.1, also acting as the V570's default gateway. The port that I am communicating on for the controller is 20256, which is the default socket setting for socket number one. I'm going to go ahead and hit save, and this will apply my configuration. My profile is being updated, and my configuration has been applied. Updating the page will now show this V570 under my configured PLCs with the serial number and the fact that it has been enabled. Now I can go to my assets tab at the top here. What I'm going to do on this tab is create a new asset type called Vision Webinar and select Add. This is the project that will contain the telemetry that is being passed to the dashboard. If I scroll down here, I can go ahead and add a new tag. And since MI or memory integer zero is the value we are manipulating, I'm going to name this operand current value. And we'll determine the data type as an MI memory integer, and the address operand will be zero. I will select RW for read and write permissions, and I will go ahead and sync and save this asset to the cloud. You'll see down here that the asset is updating and the asset type updated successfully. I will then choose save. My profile has been updated and the configuration has been applied. I will log in with the credentials that I created my UniCloud account with and select log in. The second icon in the vertical toolbar here is the device manager. I will select add to add a new asset manager. Selecting add will first prompt me with to select the asset type. We are going to select Vision Webinar, which we just created. And you'll see that the PLC type only offers Vision, Samba, and Jazz support. Any asset type that is created in Unilogic cannot be tied to a Vision controller and any asset type configured in the router cannot be selected for a Unistream controller. This PLC type does matter. I'm next going to validate my PLC serial number and select validate. 
you'll see that the catalog number shows V570-57-T20B-JN, which matches the sticker I just pulled the serial number from. I next must assign an asset name. I will name this asset webinar V570. I then have the ability to assign an asset level serial number, any comments, and very important, the router serial number because we are pulling the telemetry through this router. I will then validate my router serial number. Yielding no error allows me to select save. I now have my device listed as available in my device manager. Because MQTT is a secure protocol, we are requiring a certificate for information to be passed. I must download the certificate and then load it in my router configuration page. I'm going to choose download. Once downloaded, I can navigate back to my router configuration page and choose the configuration certificates tab. I'm going to choose the file I just downloaded, select upload file, and the file is successfully uploaded. I can then navigate back to cloud account, refresh my page, if you experience the available even after refreshing the page, select on the available in green here for the webinar V570. Select the subscription tab, and you can adjust the tag timer interval here by selecting the pencil. I will set this value down to about 15 seconds. Select save. I'll actually set it to 10 seconds and select save. You'll be prompted with a license plan change. You can go ahead and select confirm and you'll see the subscription plan required changes to basic. Select close, give it about 30 seconds to a minute and then we will go ahead and refresh our page to see if this changes from available to connected. My device now says connected. The status will change based on the current state of communication. Change from available to connected lets us know that we are now able to use VPN and also at the same time pass telemetry. Now, unlike the Unistream that you see above, the V570 that we just added, there is no web or VNC capabilities at the cloud level. This is because although the Vision series does support web service, it is not supported through the cloud. Only VPN is going to be available. VPN is going to give you the ability to tunnel into this V570 or any unit that you have connected through the router for project updates, online test mode, and firmware updates. Now that we have this controller added and connected, let's build some dashboards. I'm going to navigate to my dashboard editor. It's the fifth icon down on the vertical toolbar to the left and I will create a new dashboard. Now, the first thing we are going to do is name our dashboard. I will name it Vision Data. We are going to be pulling this current value into our dashboard format of our choosing. Now, the next thing that we have to do after we name the dashboard is assign the scope that is viewable on this said dashboard. If we had multiple organizations, multiple asset types, a selected date range, and a number of geographical locations that we were associating with this dashboard, we could choose them accordingly. I'm going to leave all of them available and choose Create. After choosing Create, you will find yourself in the Dashboard Editor with your toolboxes at the top. Now, this current value can be brought in in a number of different ways. Let's first take a look at a gauge. I'm going to scroll over, find the radial gauge, 
and drop it into the dashboard. Under asset types, we are going to choose the V57 Visi webinar, which is the asset type for a V570. Under data tags for the widget, I have the ability to associate cloud level properties like the asset ID, asset name, geography, and so on with this widget. I also have the ability to choose the current value that is coming in. This is the actual tool memory integer zero from the project that is running in the controller. This is what is going to be updating our value every time on screen when the telemetry refreshes. I will then choose next. I'm concerned about the last value coming in. If we were to perform calculations like maybe finding an average, a min, or a max, this is a situation where we would be choosing aggregated data. I will select last value, go ahead and select next. Now I can select my current value and drag and drop it under the data and metrics. You'll see it has updated here in the data preview and it shows the radial gauge here in the preview. I will choose next. I can name my widget and I will name it current value gauge. We then have properties that are aesthetic based to change color and spacing. If we wanted to create ranges, we would have the ability to do so. I'm going to choose next. And we find ourselves at the navigation portion of the menu. Now navigation, I will demonstrate shortly. When we put our map on screen, if we wanted to create some form of jump to a different dashboard based on selecting this widget, we have the ability to do so with this portion of the menu. I'm going to choose finish. And we will now adjust the size of the gauge. Now, if we wanted to show this value on a trend, for example, we have the ability to choose a line. Scroll over to the line, drag and drop it here on the dashboard. Now we must choose from our list of asset types, again, the project we are referencing is the V570 Visi webinar. Go ahead and select that. And then the data tags, for this widget, there are a number of asset properties that are automatically assigned from the cloud account. This is the asset ID, asset name, and the date and time stamp. That is going to allow you to keep track of your data when the legend is created for your trend. We also need to select the current value. This will be the value that will be trending. We will choose next. And here we would like to choose the raw data for the trend. I will select next. I will select our current value and drag it, drop it into the data and metrics. You will see the data preview will update and the preview will update with values on the trend. I will select next. I now have the ability to name my trend. I will go ahead and name it trend of current value. I can choose next. Now again, if I want to set up navigation to a different dashboard, this is the menu I can do so. I'm going to choose finish since we won't be doing that just yet. I will I can choose next. Now again, if I want to set up navigation I can choose Next. Now, again, if I want to set up navigation to a different dashboard, this is the menu I can do so. I'm going to choose finish since we won't be doing that just yet. I will adjust the size of the trend so that it's easier to see on my dashboard. I can choose next. Now, again, if I want to set up navigation to a different dashboard, this is the menu I can do so. I'm going to choose finish since we won't be doing that just yet. I will adjust the size of the trend so that it's easier to see on my dashboard. And I can make this a little bit bigger so that way they look similar in size. Now that my data sets are complete, what I can do is I can publish this dashboard. I will go up to the 
Publish button here. Go ahead and click on it. Go ahead and select Confirm. And it will go ahead and publish. Now, if I want to create an overview page for potentially all the vision units that are connected on my account, what I can do is I can make another dashboard. I'm going to create a new dashboard. I'm going to name it Vision Overview. This time I'm going to limit my asset type to just the assets running in the Vision B570 webinar. This way I will only be able to see the last controller that we have added because it is specific to this asset type. If I did not choose this, all the linked controllers would be available on this map. And for this specific example, I do not necessarily want that. So I'm going to choose Create. What I'm going to do is select the map, go ahead and scroll over to the right, and drag and drop the map on the dashboard. I'm going to choose my B570 Visi webinar. We'll see because I've limited it only this particular asset type is selectable. Again, asset properties that are cloud assigned are default. Uh, the asset ID, geography, and status. This is going to be part of a pop-up when I hover over my indication on the map. These three asset properties are going to show in the pop-up. If I also wanted to add the current value, I could do that as well. I don't necessarily need that for my pop-up, so I'm going to choose next because we know that we are going to jump to the dashboard with this value when it's available. I'll go ahead and select next. Since the last value is the only scope that is accessible, I will choose last value and choose next and choose next again. I'm going to name this map location. And we'll then choose next. Now for my navigation, what ultimately I would like to do is select my map indicator and load my vision data page accordingly. This is how you would reference VNC and web server as well with the Unistream controllers. When you are using these widgets, you are navigating per asset type and also per asset ID. So I'm going to choose navigate per asset type. We want to jump to the vision data. So I will select that. And then I will also select filter by asset ID since I'm loading that machine's current data. I will choose finish. I can now resize my map accordingly. make it easier to see. And I'll go ahead and publish the dashboard and select confirm. Now to see what I mean, select the eye icon under my vision overview here. And hovering over the map allows me to see the type owner and status for the asset I created in the vision overview under navigation. By clicking the map indicator, allows me to see the current data set for my unit connected. Now at this point, I would like to open it up for questions. Thank you.
And it would be feel free uh, to type in any questions you had about the webinar, and I'll be happy to answer them. Oh, you're welcome. Uh, yeah, sure thing. Uh, our tech support is here to help uh, with, with, with questions you need or any kind of project levels. Uh, you can contact us at support at unitronics.com uh, with any questions as you get going. Uh, we'd be more than happy to help you guys along the way. Welcome. Uh, I see there's a hand raised. Uh, I don't know if we're able to communicate before if you might have to type in your question, if you have a question, Rob. Um, this webinar is being recorded. Uh, we will send out a copy uh, after everything's finished and stuff to everybody who registered today. 
in case if that's a question at all. Um, but yeah, feel free. I'll stay on for about another 10 minutes in case anyone has any questions. Feel free to put them in the chat there and I'll answer them. <laughs> 